Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today we are finally going to talk about avocado. I have mentioned them briefly in the more list format videos but we haven't actually done a deep dive comparison, a impact analysis where we specifically focus on the avocado, the much appreciated avo toast, the divine guac. So I hope you're sitting comfortably because now we're gonna learn. So avocados have increased drastically in popularity since the 2010s. Actually so much so that the global sales of avocado have increased by 21% according to the International Trade Center. And avos are often advertised as a superfood. Meanwhile, there is no such thing as a superfood. It's just marketing being marketing, but I digress. They are, however, rich in different nutrients and there are several health benefits to consuming foods like avocado. But while avocado have increased in popularity, it has also been the subject of scrutiny and criticism. I often see the avocado used in arguments about sustainable foods and when we have to point out how hypocritical vegans are. At least it's been basically impossible for me to talk about the positive impact of eating more plant-based foods without someone raising their hands and asking about avocados. And avocados are often brought into the conversation when we're talking about the impact of other types of foods and especially so animal products. So we're going to look at both those impacts and compare them today. Let's start by talking about emissions. So finding out the emissions generated from avocado production, you can look at LCA reports. So one average avocado emits on average 425 grams of CO2. And when looking for this information, I went through several LCA reports. And you have to be a little bit careful because some LCA reports uses data that's been collected over the course of 15 years. And the avocado produced 15 years ago had a much lower carbon footprint than the avocado that's produced today because of intensive farming practices and the increased demand. We'll see some that claims it's a little bit lower, but that's the ballpark. That's what you need to know. Man, I can talk about this for a while. I do, however, think that it's important to note that this is in the higher end when it comes to fruit and vegetables. Also when it comes to other exotic fruits, because one avocado emits twice as much CO2 as a whole kilogram of bananas. As such, we are on the higher end when we look at similar products. However, the carbon footprint of avocado is still significantly lower than most animal products, like lamb, cheese, pork, and beef. Beef has the highest carbon footprint, measuring roughly 100 kilograms of CO2, per kilogram of beef. And among the foods on the global market that emit the most CO2, the avocado is not in the top 10, which goes sort of like this, with beef at the top with almost 100 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of beef. Then we have chocolate with roughly 46 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of chocolate. Then we have lamb and mutton with 39 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram. Going further down the list, we have beef, but from dairy cows, landing on 33 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram. Then we have coffee, 28, farmed prawns, 26, cheese, 23, farmed fish, 13, and pork, 12. And as it is with all data sets, you will be able to find lists where the order is slightly different, but you sort of get the point of what the top 10 high impact foods look like. So avocados themselves aren't necessarily terrible for the environment. At least that are many foods that have much higher impacts than avocados. However, we are mass producing avocado at a frightening speed. The mass production of anything will be detrimental to the planet and we're definitely seeing that in the avocado industry because of increased demand, especially from the West. I would not dream of sitting here and arguing that there isn't a dark side to our love for guac and avocado toast. There is, because avocado require a lot of space and water. And these resources are taken from local communities causing deforestation and drought. And you can see this in many communities, but especially so in Mexico and Peru. It takes 227 liters of water to produce one avocado. And that is a lot if you compare to other foods in the same category, so fruit and vegetables. Like it takes 15 liters of water to produce an apple. So once again, looking at food in the same category, we are in the higher End. However, I'm going to compare it to beef again. And I'm not doing this because there is any scientific or academic reason as to why that is. It doesn't make sense to compare them, first of all, because they are different food categories. So, flight chains are different, the resource use is different. It doesn't really make sense 
to compare them because they are not substituting each other either. However, the reason why I want to compare them is because whenever I talk about the impact of beef, whenever I talk about the impact of animal agriculture, avocado is always brought up. So if you're sitting there thinking the same thing, or if you have also heard what about avocados then, let me help you out. It takes 15,000 liters of water to produce one kilogram of beef. It's just another league. When it comes to resource use and emissions, it's just another league. So that's why I won't be having this comparison. But if I never got that question, if I never got that feedback about avocados, I wouldn't compare these two products because they don't function as substitutes for each other and they're not in the same food category. But alas, there you go. The production of avocado is linked to deforestation, especially in Mexico, the largest producer of avocados in the world, accounting for more than half of global production, where a whopping 80 square kilometers or 20,000 acres are cleared every year to make space for the production. And 9.5 million tons of water is displaced every day from local communities because of avocado production. And water scarcity isn't just happening in Mexico, we also see it in Europe. In Europe, Spain is the largest producer of avocado. And the country suffers increasing water distress as a result of avocado production in those regions. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, more than two thirds of the world's fresh water is withdrawn for food production. But interestingly, the avocado isn't in the top 10 of most water intensive foods either. North America is the largest importer of avocados in the world, accounting for 52% of import. Europe accounts for 33. And in 2021, the US imported 1.2 million tons of avocado, 89% of them from Mexico. In Europe, the Netherlands import the majority of avocados, but that's not because the Dutch just love avocado more than any other European country. It's because of the transit hubs that's placed in the Netherlands that redistribute to the rest of Europe. Some articles forget to mention that, just make it sound like the Dutch, which is a pretty small country, more avocados than the rest of Europe, which is not the case. <laughs> the European countries that import and consume the most avocados are Spain, France, Germany and the UK. And you have probably wondered about transportation at this point. At least it's one of the major concerns that I often hear when we talk about the global food system. And yes, when it comes to avocado, there's typically a certain amount of transportation involved. And there are definitely more or less eco-friendly ways of transporting goods. But I think it's very important to remember that transportation actually doesn't account for that much of the impact of food. It's often made out to be as though transportation is the most important part. An average transportation impact only accounts for 5% of the overall impact of a product. The vast majority of the impact comes from what the product is, the agricultural practices that's used, everything that has to do with the resource use required to generate the product in the first place and less than 5% has to do with transportation and another 4.6% has to do with packaging. Now we have our priority straight. And it's important to know this so we don't hyper focus on the wrong things. When it comes to foods like animal products, the transportation impact is very, very small. The vast majority of the impact comes from the production of it. When it comes to fruit and vegetables, however, you can see that the transportation starts to matter a little bit more. Around 8% of the avocado's impact comes from transportation. One misconception that I often see floating around, pun intended, is that avocados are transported by plane. We transport a lot less food by plane than we typically tend to believe. Avocados are typically picked before they're ripe and then we put them on boats and then they ripen on the boats. It's actually less than 2% of all food miles that's accounted for by airplanes. And a good rule of thumb, if you want to figure out what foods are traveling by plane, think about what foods have very short shelf lives yet have been transported very far. It will often be stuff like green beans. It will be stuff like berries, asparagus, especially. Those types of foods have very short shelf lives, but came a very long way. How does that work? That's airplane. But again, it's very few food products that are transported by plane. However, when they are, the transportation emissions become 50 times larger. But that's not the case for avocados typically. Even though an avocado from Mexico to the UK typically travel more than 5,000 miles, it's still not the biggest part of the impact when it's traveling by boat. And eating local food is great, especially if you're focusing on seasonal foods. But just because something is produced locally, say locally produced beef, doesn't make the carbon footprint smaller than imported fruit and veg. In some specific scenarios, that can be the case, like with backyard chicken and eggs. But even small-scale farming typically uses more resources than imported fruit and veg. So you can be pretty sure that the majority of your imported fruit and veg still has a lower impact than locally produced meat. In the 
these impact analysis essays, I think it's very important to talk about stuff like resource usage and emissions, but we can't really talk about sustainability without also talking about the social impact that comes from value chains, supply chains, and our global food systems. And when it comes to avocado production, there is a social impact that we need to be aware of. With the increased popularity of avocados, there's a lot of money to be made here. And that's attracting the worst people and the worst business practices. And the most utter disrespect for local communities. When you suddenly see this spike in demand, it often comes at the expense of people. In Chile, agriculture, energy, and mining companies have displaced water from local farmers and communities for decades in order to become major exporters of copper, avocado and wine. This has meant that the local environment has had no water for the people. In Mexico, the avocado industry is also affected by corruption and violence from cartels because of the lucrative business of selling to the West. It's also been documented that workers on avocado farms in Kenya have been sexually assaulted and then threatened into silence. And when talking about the social impact, there's really no way around the fact that a lot of the avocados that's being sold in Europe comes from Israel. Yesterday I was in a little store and they had a nice box of unwrapped, unplasticed avocados. I wasn't looking for an avocado, I didn't want to get one, but I always like to see sort of where food comes from and where little avocados come from. Also just finished the script, it was fresh in my mind, let's check it out. And it said country of origin, Israel slash Morocco slash Spain. They just don't know. And that's something you could also be aware of if you want to be a conscious consumer and also think about the social impact. We're not supporting Schmendeschmeid. And from what we can see from data sets collected from the last 20 years, the impact of avocados is getting worse. And despite the global criticism of avocados and the avocado supply chain, nothing is really being done to improve it. It's not the food with the biggest carbon footprint, but with this supply chain in mind, it is something to be aware of and to consume consciously. I think a balanced view on avocado is important here. It's not the super villain it's often made out to be, but but there are definitely really serious issues within the supply chain. However, it's important to note that when it comes to forced labor, slavery, SA, when it comes to resource displacement, when it comes to water usage and emissions, we can see this happening in all supply chains of, of major food groups. You can say the same thing for coffee, chocolate, wine, and animal products. And I assure you, every problem that exists in the avocado supply chain also exists in animal ag. 100%. But I think finding a good balance here is key and relying more so on locally seasonal vegetables and fruits is the way to go. I haven't cut avocados completely out of my diet, but I think I have one or two every month, just for full transparency. Avocados are rich in fat, fiber, vitamin E, vitamin C, magnesium, and potassium, but so are a lot of other foods. So you don't need to rely solely on avocado for these types of nutrients. Now, one of the major reasons why I'm making this video in the first place is because I've been asked the, well, what about avocados question so many times. So let's talk about the whataboutism. It seems that there is a misconception that avocados emit more CO2 or are more impactful than meat and dairy, but when you actually look at the emissions from avocados compared to meat and dairy, avocados have a lower impact. But the avocado argument is often used as a gotcha moment when you're trying to reduce your meat consumption or if you've transitioned to a plant-based vegetarian diet. It's often something that's used to deflect from the actual conversation and establish that although you don't eat meat, you eat bad things for the planet too. So it's not just the people that eat meat that are doing shit for the planet, it's also the people that are not eating meat. It's it's often used as a tool to establish that we are all equally bad so no one has to change anything. You know that's not how we roll. I cannot count the amount of times I've talked about eating a plant-based diet and been hit with a, but what about avocados though, huh? And it's classic what about the sim, where we're deflecting from the actual topping and making a false comparison that doesn't make sense because they're two vastly different food products. On top of that, it's not as impactful as meat and dairy anyway. The way I typically combat this is by asking what's bad about avocados or can you tell me about the impact of avocados and often the conversation or the discussion ends there because the people 
saying what about avocados, just know that avocados are bad and just need to remind me that I'm not perfect. They don't know that I am perfectly aware of the fact that I am not perfect. I am not a perfect consumer. I don't think they exist and supply chains from many different types of products are complex, complicated and full of errors and flaws. But that doesn't take away from the fact that animal agriculture, industrialized animal agriculture is still the worst super villain last boss in a video game type bad. But no, I absolutely agree, avocados are not great either. I have also heard that the increased demand for avocados is because there is an increased number of people going vegan or vegetarian. Now, vegans account for about 1% of the human population and there are vastly more vegetarians. I think it's about 30% of India's population that's vegetarian. But the increased demand from avocados doesn't come from India. It comes from the West. It comes from Europe and the US, where, you guessed it, vegans and vegetarians eat avocados, but so does meat eaters, frequently as well. I have never seen anyone substitute meat for avocado. So again, the comparison doesn't really make sense. There isn't really significant amounts of protein in avocado. I think it's about four grams of protein per 100 grams. So that doesn't make any sense at all. Especially not when there are so many good plant-based sources of protein. So everybody in the West is eating them. And the fact is that as with many other high impact fruit and vegetables, we need to slow down and focus more on what is seasonally available to us here. That doesn't mean that you can't ever have an avocado, but it means that having them every day probably isn't the best idea if there are other more low impact options you can choose from instead. I think it's good to have in mind that not all plant-based foods are inherently sustainable and there are also awful things happening in supply chains for many types of fruits and vegetables. And we see it with chocolate, coffee, some types of wine and yeah, avocado. Just because something is plant-based doesn't mean that it's inherently climate positive or good for the planet, but it does mean that it's better than a diet that's rich in animal protein. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. You can also find my sources down below if you're interested or ever so keen to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!